MDM4U 2.5 Measures of Central Tendency. Measures of central tendency include mean, median, and mode, which are different ways of finding the middle of the data set. The mean, we add up all the values in a set, divide by the total number of values in the set. But there's a difference between the population mean and the sample mean. The population is all members of a group of interest, and a sample is the subgroup which is used to be representative of this group. So we use a different symbol when calculating the mean of a sample versus the mean of a population. Notice that the lowercase n indicates the number of elements in the sample and the capital N represents the number of elements in the population. Mu is the Greek letter denoted to represent the population mean. X bar is used to represent the sample mean. We need to distinguish between these two because oftentimes we use a sample mean to approximate the population mean. So the median is the middle value of a set of data ranked from lowest to highest. The mode is the most frequent data value in the set. So there are examples that you can go through on your own. Let's make it more interesting with weighted mean. So a measure of central tendency that reflects the greater significance of certain data. So this formula, X bar, or the weighted mean, it's the sum of, and this is a product between the weight of a particular value and the actual value itself, divided by the sum of the weight of the values. So the following table summarizes the weighting criteria for a job interview as well as the score out of five for two job candidates, Anna and Ben. Notice that each of these different uh, categories, skill, experience, interview, have different weights. This group is really interested in the skill of the individuals. And this is their score for each of the candidates. Determine each candidate, candidate's weighted mean. So we'll go through Anna. The weighted mean for Anna Take the weight times the actual score. So that's five times four, two times five, and one times two. And we add them together, divided by the sum of the weights. So five plus two plus one. And when we calculate this value, it's equal to four. So based on this criteria, it assigns more importance to certain characteristics. Now, group data. This will be easier to explain with an image. So group data is like this right here, and this is an histogram. We group data into intervals, but what we don't know, say for example this bar, between 180 and 190 centimeters, there are four individuals in the data set that have a height that belongs to that set. But we don't know the particular values. It could be 181, 182, repeated. So a way to be able to approximate measures of central tendency is to treat each point as if it was the midpoint of that interval. So 185, for example. So let's take a look at this formula for the group mean. The frequency times the midpoint of the interval and we add that up for each and every single value and divide by the total frequency. So let's take a look. The grouped mean of this sample is the following. We see a frequency of two happening inside of this interval. We'll treat it as if it's 175 and 175. That's why we do two times 175. Similarly, for this interval, the frequency was four. We don't know the values in the interval, but we'll use the midpoint. So four times 185 and so on for the numerator. The denominator is the sum of the frequencies. So how frequent was this? Two, four, one, two, and one. And this gives us the grouped mean as 192. Next, the grouped median. We are treating these 
midpoints as if they were the actual values in the set. So we can arrange them from least to greatest and find the middle. If we were to write out 175, 175, 185, 185, 185, 185. I apologize for that. <laughs> but that is exactly what's happening. And another way of doing this, which is more convenient, is if you look at the total number of elements in the set, we already took the total, the sum of the frequencies was 10. So if you had five on the left, five on the right, that's between the fifth and the sixth element. Look at the cumulative frequency, finding a function for the cumulative frequency. It's between the fifth and the sixth element. So the fifth and the sixth element occurs here. So we would say that it's equal to 185. Let's get this together. So 185 is the value of the midpoint between 185 and 185. So lastly, the mode is the most frequent value in the set. And here we can see that this bar is at four for its frequency. So 185 is the mode in this example. All right.